Hello, and welcome to the Reselling Report podcast for today, Monday, July 6th, 2020. I'm your host, Ann Eckhart, and every weekday I upload the Reselling Report to update you on the day's retail and e-commerce news, including the latest from eBay, Amazon, Etsy, and Poshmark. Whether you're listening on YouTube or your favorite podcast site, make sure you're subscribed. And now let's get on with today's show. Well, happy Monday, everyone. I hope everyone had a nice 4th of July weekend here in the States. I know there was a lot of um, some cities canceling fireworks and doing them virtually, or you could go out and sit in your car and watch from a distance. So yeah, it was interesting to see the fireworks shows, you know, that they broadcast on TV in Washington, D.C. and New York. They had huge displays, but um, not a lot of people out, which is good because unfortunately, the coronavirus cases are surging here in America, particularly California, Arizona, Texas, and Florida, but actually all across the country. I think there's only one state left where they're not seeing a spike. Uh, Texas hospitals, some are starting to reach capacity. And because of this, retail is starting to roll back in some areas. We've already heard that Apple is reclosing stores that they just reopened in some hot spots. And now McDonald's is rolling back on their plans to open up their dining rooms. This will depend on where their franchises are. If the franchise is in an area where it's okay, the local authorities are saying that they can stay open. They can, but generally uh, McDonald's is going to stick with drive-through and pick up and delivery. Does anybody get delivery from McDonald's? My dad likes a caramel frappe like every day. I could use McDonald's delivery, but I feel like it costs more than the frappe. But anyway, we talk about these things on the show because they do affect those of us who are resellers, who depend on retail stores, thrift stores, and regular retail to be open uh, to go and source. And of course, it's prime sourcing season. We know that the thrift stores are loaded with inventory from people who cleaned out their houses during the um, stay-at-home orders. And retail is trying to clearance all of the merchandise they didn't sell for three months when their doors were locked. But at the same time, there's a pandemic. So again, if you are going out, please, please be safe. Continue to wear a mask, social distance, and um, wash those hands. So I don't know. I feel like every day we wake up to something new. So I just personally am anticipating that stores could um, close their doors again any day now. So I think as a reseller, you just have to be aware of that and do your sourcing now while you can. So let's get into the reselling sites themselves. We're starting with eBay today. Just a quick note, if you are in the UK, eBay UK is running a promotion encouraging shoppers to buy from small businesses and save 20% on eligible items using the coupon code PICKSMALLBIZ. Now there's a landing page and it's there's about, let me see, almost 7,000 items on this page that, no, I'm sorry, 9,000. 9,000 items on this page uh, that you can pr- apply this code to. Now, it says small sellers, but all of these kind of look like professional business sellers. So yeah, it's a lot of stock photos. I mean, there are a few individuals in here and there. Of course, they don't say how they chose who got to be in the promotion, but it is a promotion, 20% off certain small business <laughs> items. And yeah, if you're in the UK, there is an entire portal over there for you um, to look at. Also on eBay, I wanted to talk about managed payments. So I've talked about how I have already pre-registered for managed payments because they're going to be put in in July. Now I've told you better be ready by July 15th. So I don't know. Then another page says late July. So I'm I'm aiming or thinking that the 15th, they're going to put me in managed payments. So I've done the registration. I talked about last week how I had to upload a bank statement because they wouldn't verify my account even though it's the same account that's already on file, but we've been through that. So I uploaded bank statement, I got verified, and it's out. Great, we'll let you know when we're ready. Now I've got another notice. You've successfully registered for managed payments, excuse me. Thanks for getting your business started early. In the meantime, you may want to consider a few things to prepare your business for managed payments. So again, it says, we'll notify you before activating your account on managed payments starting in late July, 2020. Nothing will change in how you manage your business on eBay until then. So there's that. Then there's an entire um, prepare for the transition. And they've also provided me a checklist. So I thought I would share this with you because I've already registered, but it's telling me before registering, have the following information handy. So if you have not registered yet, and you've gotten the notice that July is your month, 
Just so you know, you're going to need your business info. If you're a registered business, do you know your business type, which is usually sole proprietor? You can typically find this in official documents such as tax returns or bank statements. You'll need your social security number or employer identification number. You'll need bank account info. The name or business name on the registered eBay account must match the name or business name on the bank account so we can verify the individual or business receiving funds is the same individual or business managing the eBay account. You can edit the name on your eBay account in the account section of my eBay. So if you are someone who named your eBay account your eBay store name, but your bank account is your name, that might trip you up, but you can change that account name on eBay, so we'll go through. It says tip, payouts will be paid to your bank account. Consider opening and maintaining a separate bank account for your business to stay organized. Um, Then it says identification information of each person who owns 25% or more of your business if applicable in case there are any issues with your eBay account. We need this info to know who to contact first. So if you have a business partner, and I don't know how that would work for a married couple, honestly. I mean, I think most married couples would have a joint account that they're running eBay through, but I don't know. Fortunately, I i mean, I had enough trouble just getting mine through and I'm single. I don't know. You can let me know if you're married and have had any issues getting registered. Now, then it says after registration. So this is where I am now. A few things to note as you prepare your business. Starting in late July 2020, we will notify you before activating your account. Until then, it's business as usual. Okay, updating your existing listings. Within 24 hours of activation, your listings are automatically updated with supported payment methods. You may not be able to list certain items. Oh, for crying out loud. See the managed payments restricted items policy. Let's go over here and see what is. Now, currently, adult-only items, including movies and video games, auction services. What does that mean? Bullion, coins and paper money, gift cards and coupon, lodging, timeshares, vacation packages and car rentals, membership for campground and RV parks, motor vehicles, smoking products, including nicotine patches and gum, tickets for travel events and experiences, and wine. Now, we know at the moment these are not in managed payments, but they have said that bullion, coins, and paper money will be, but apparently not yet. So we'll go back to my checklist here, get off of that. Um, Third-party tool support. If you use third-party tools to manage your eBay business, there should be no change in how you use those tools. Well, I don't use any, so skip that. Reports, if you use PayPal reports, now you can manage all your selling and payments data needs from within your eBay account with downloadable, customizable reports on the payments tab of Seller Hub for easy reconciliation. Now, I'm looking forward to that, to seeing what it looks like. Ugh. I use those a lot, or the PayPal reports, so we'll see what eBay comes up with. Next is your existing eBay integrations. If you are directly integrated with eBay's APIs or MIP, you may need to make updates to get new payments data and functionality. You will need to integrate the finance API to get payout details. I don't do any of that. Next, fee updates and your reconciliations. This is what I am looking forward to. You'll pay one final value fee for items you sell on eBay, and you won't have to worry about third-party payment processing fees. Your final value fees will be automatically deducted from your sales and the balance paid out to your bank account. I am very happy about that because once again, first of the month hit, and even though I pay my eBay fees as I go, I'm still always hit with a bill of about $100 to cover my store and promoted listings and all the things. And so just like uh, Poshmark and Etsy, you get the money after your fees are paid. I am looking forward to that. So the money that's in my account is mine. I don't have another bill to pay. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, so yeah, that is the little checklist that they gave me since I'm already registered. So hopefully that helps you uh, if you aren't already. Again, you would have gotten a message from eBay and they would keep sending it to you. I keep getting messages saying that I should register even though I already have So if you haven't gotten any messages, you're not going in in July. You'll have another month, I assume. (laughs) Um, But yeah, because I've had some people comment, well, I didn't get a message. I haven't heard anything. Then you're good staying with PayPal. Um, But yet, I would, again, recommend making sure you have those bank statements and business info straightened out because you will need that. And that is where I ran into a bit of a glitch when I tried to register. So 
I guess by the end of the month, I will be in eBay's managed payments. So it's happening whether I like it or not. Hopefully it will end up being a good thing after all is said and done. In Amazon news, there's a new post over on the e-commerce bites blog that's titled Amazon seeks ways to reduce fraud and fee avoidance. The post reads, Amazon wants to sift out shady messages between buyers and sellers, a patent filing reveals. Two big reasons for concern, fraud and fee avoidance. Amazon's patent cited examples of how unscrupulous buyers might attempt to engage in various type of fraudulent activities, submit orders without providing valid payment, i.e. using fraudulent money, orders, stolen credit cards, etc., attempt to attain personal information about sellers, attempt to move communications off the marketplace to avoid protections provided by or fees charged by Amazon. Amazon also provided examples of messages unscrupulous sellers might send in an attempt to defraud buyers and obtain authorized access to sellers' accounts and then impersonate the seller. In the latter case, Amazon pointed out that with access to a seller's account, a fraudster could gain access to contact information for buyers with whom the seller has previously interacted, which the user may then use for various types of fraudulent activities, i.e. to fish for other confidential information about the buyer. Thus, Amazon writes, it would be beneficial to provide techniques to inhibit fraudulent activities related to electronic commerce, including by inhibiting electronic communications that reflect or further such fraudulent activities, as well as to provide other benefits. The patent filing describes various techniques for assessing communications to identify those that are suspect. Amazon might then block the communication from reaching its intended recipient, or it could flag the communication as suspect, or it could modify the message to remove inappropriate content. So this is technology Amazon wants to introduce uh, on their site in relation to communication between buyers and sellers. So we know if Amazon paves the way with something, then we'll likely see it on the other sites, but we will keep an eye on this um, story to see how the patent proceeds if it is approved and if Amazon implements this new technology. Turning now to Etsy, did you know that Cindy Lou Who is not only a friend of the Grinch, but she's also a friend of e-commerce? Yes, Cindy Lou Who too has a Tumblr page where she talks about online selling, e-commerce marketing, and SEO, special focus on standalone websites and Etsy shops. And Cindy Lou Who, too, has posted an article titled Etsy Offsite Ads and the Facebook Ad Boycott. So according to Cindy Lou Who, one seller, screenshot above, says Etsy is giving people the ability to opt out of offsite ads for July so they can join the Facebook ad boycott that protests Facebook's failure to remove hate speech, Holocaust denials, and other harmful posts and misinformation from its platform. Etsy as a whole has not yet joined the boycott. Now, update from Cindy Lou Who. She says, Etsy has turned my off-site ads off for the month of July. Their email stated that they feel that Etsy joining the boycott could hurt shops too much, but that they have turned off all off-site ads for the month. Apparently, it is not possible to turn off just Facebook and Instagram, so they're all gone. Um, she says that she can turn her ads back on herself through her dashboard at any time before August 1st. Um, goes on to write, if you are not familiar with the ad boycott, there are certain news, there are current news stories uh, related to uh, Facebook and Twitter companies not running ads on those sites uh in an effort to get those sites to control hate speech. So if you support the boycott and do not want your fees going towards offsite ad sales from Facebook and Instagram, you can contact Etsy to tell them this. And she gives a an example of a letter that she wrote to Etsy. And I'll just read that in case you want to hear it. It says, hello, I am appalled that Etsy has not joined the Facebook ad boycott in July with the hashtag stop hate for profit. As a company that claims to care about... uh." Diversity and inclusion. There's some grammar mistakes in here from Cindy Lou Who, so I'm just kind of... Anyway, uh, Etsy's continued use of Facebook, Facebook and Instagram ads, which may appear next to hate speech, incitement to violence, Holocaust denials, etc., is shopping, shocking and hypocritical. Furthermore, Etsy forcing all shop owners who sell over $10,000 in a year to be shown in ads on these two platforms and pay Etsy's 12% of all sales that come from those ads is unjust. Unlike Etsy, I do not want to support hate speech with my money, nor do I want my shop name anywhere near these types of Facebook posts. Etsy needs to join the boycott. Until I do, I will not be making any purchases on Etsy, instead using other platforms and websites to buy from my favorite Etsy sellers. In 
if my forced offsite ads make any Facebook or Instagram sales this month, I will donate more money than the ad fees to groups who work against the hate speech, misinformation, and voter suppression tactics that Etsy is supporting with its advertising dollars. But it would be a much better solution if Etsy stopped all ads on Facebook and Instagram for the month, including ads from my shop. Now, that's what Cindy Lou, who too, wrote to Etsy. So you'll have to let me know if Etsy turned your off-site ads off. Now, again, if you sell $10,000 or more in a year, you don't have the option to turn the ads off. If you sell less than, you can. So you'll have to let me know if you sell more than $10,000, were your off-site ads turned off by Etsy for um, the month of July? In Poshmark news, Poshmark continues to regurgitate information they have already posted month ag- months ago over on their Facebook page. They have bumped up their post about using social media, and they discuss that in a Level Up Live, so it will link to that if you missed it the, the first time around. And then they also bumped up how to list on Poshmark in three simple steps, so if you're new to Poshmark, you're not sure how to get started, those two items have been bumped up over on their Facebook page. And you know I like to get the best Poshmark info from their Reddit forum. Well, not Poshmark's Reddit. People who use Poshmark made a Reddit forum. (laughs) Um, So over on the Poshmark Reddit forum, I thought this was an interesting post. It's titled, I get this from sellers all the time. Does anyone else hate this as much as I do? And she um, posted a screenshot where she asked the seller to post photos of the soles and the sizing tag of shoes. And the seller wrote back, they have never been worn. The um, potential customer said, thanks. That isn't what I asked, though. I asked if you could post photos of the soles and the sizing label. And so other sellers are chiming in saying, yes, you need to be posting the bottom of the shoe. You need to be showing the actual wear. Even if there's no wear, you need to take a picture. And you need to take pictures of the sizing information. So that does sound like a very newbie um mistake that this seller is making by not providing enough photos. I take photos, I don't sell shoes, but when I do clothing, I do take a picture of the, um, however many labels are inside. Sometimes all the information is on the collar labels, but other times, like if it's a shirt, you have to get kind of go to near the hem on the inside, there'll be a fabric content label, washing instructions, all of that. It's just good, easy practice to Uh, Make sure you're taking pictures of all labels and all sides of an item, including shoes, taking pictures of the bottom so that you don't have to deal with messages asking if they could see a photo and losing out on a sale because this person is not going to buy unless they get to see the bottom of the shoes as well as the sizing tag. And finally today, one little bit of news about Macari. I know I've had a lot of uh, requests for news from Macari. There generally isn't much. Maybe once a month, there'll be something from Macari. But I did want to point you over to um, CBS and The Talk. They did a partnership with Macari with a segment of turning your decluttering into cash. So this is about a five minute video that you can watch where they talk about how to use Mercari uh, to clean things out of your house. Now this is a kind of a paid promotion, I would guess, with Mercari. Uh, Yes, sponsored by Mercari. But if you're interested in Mercari, you can go watch the ladies of the talk talk about how they are supposedly selling their items for cash over on Mercari. And that's a wrap on today's show. If you listed on YouTube, be sure to give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment. Remember that you can also listen to the podcast via Anchor, Spotify, Apple, and more. Check out the show notes below for links to the articles I referenced. And if you want to learn how to make money on eBay and YouTube the way I do, check out my books over on Amazon. My Amazon store is linked below. Thank you so much for listening. I will talk to you again tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye.